I was raised up in it. I want to keep the tradition alive to help support it any way and every way that I can. No instruments accompany Sacred Harp singing. When the hymns, odes, and anthems are performed, it's with the singer's natural sacred harp, the human voice. This expression of life through the melody and harmony of the singer's sacred harps opens their hearts to each other, it's believed, and moves them into a closer relationship with the spirit of their God. But sacred harp is uh, a cappella music. There are no musical instruments, harp or otherwise, in that. And it's four-part harmony. It's got a tradition that goes back several hundred years, at least to the 18th century. As it establishes itself in Puritan New England, uh, it's, a, it's a, an American development of an English sacred singing tradition. This spread of singing schools to the South, the Midwest, and elsewhere was driven by the invention of shape notes, a system first published in 1801. Four note heads in distinctive geometrical shapes were used to indicate the four syllables fa, sol, la, and mi, making it easier for untrained singers to sight read music. Sacred Harp singing in the South then moved away from the southern plantation and coastal regions and into the inland Piedmont region and the southern Appalachian Mountains. The music became part of the social and religious life of rural America. Civil War breaks out, which sends the South on a, on a different path in history than the rest of the country, and many things uh, in the South were considered sacred. Many of those antebellum things that were associated with the Old South and the good old days were considered sacred by many people. But economic and cultural changes affected much of the rural South in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Sacred harp singing declined in popularity almost to the point of extinction. In 1935, however, research by scholar George Pullen Jackson showed that there were still thousands of sacred harp singers in the southern mountains. There were also survivals of black sacred harp singing in the deep South. In recent years, sacred harp singing has undergone a revival throughout the United States. Singings are held in more than 30 states as well as in Canada and England. If you saw the 2003 movie Cold Mountain, you heard sacred harp singing. So we held a singing school, we advertised it, and lo and behold, people from Northwest Arkansas came that were interested, that knew nothing about it. But along with Sid, we had people from Wisconsin, New York, and Texas, and Memphis, Tennessee, experienced singers that traveled all that way to help get a group started here. I found a book last Sunday at the Singing Made uh, back in 1960. And it, it, brought, it brought back memories to me. But I, I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity. And, I, and the people from the church told me, said, you need to come back and you need to come back. Let's join the Northwest Arkansas Sacred Harp Singers to learn about the basics. Remember that Sacred Harp singing is based on a four note system. Fa is a triangle, sol an oval, la a square, and mi a diamond. To get ready to sing a song, we first sing using only the syllables as we learn our parts. The four harmony parts are treble, also called soprano, tenor, which is the melody, alto, and bass. 
Singers choose the part that feels best to them. Both men and women can elect to sing any of the four parts or change from one to another as they wish. Sacred Harp is traditionally sung in what's called a hollow square with treble facing bass and alto facing tenor. The leader stands in the center and everyone else faces into the square. The hollow square allows the singing to be echoed back to each part. While the leader's arm indicates the tempo, other singers may also swing their arms or tap their feet in cadence. Since there are no instruments in Sacred Harp, one singer sets the pitch for all the parts. As you can hear, Sacred Harp is sung loudly, virtually at the top of the singer's voices, although the leader can place accents in the music with the fall or rise of an arm. Now it's time to try your hand at singing. You may already know the words to Amazing Grace. Shape Note Tradition uses tune names for songs rather than text titles, so Amazing Grace in Sacred Harp is called New Britain. Now let's sing the melody. This first time through, we'll sing just the syllable names, not the words. Now let's try it again, this time singing the words. We'll sing the first verses. Now that you've sung Sacred Harp, you may understand those who describe it as a full body shouted out singing. It's got to be loud and clear and, and if you look around at the faces of our people who sing, it's got to be a half a step below heaven, whether they're believers or not. There's just, there's something incredible about it. Also, I think something that's really wonderful about Sacred Harp singing is that it transcends all bounds. Um, it doesn't matter what you believe or what you don't believe. It, it, it's something that you feel inside. It, it fills me with a, a spiritual joy. Does that make sense? Okay, it fills me with uh, joy unbelievable and full of grace. And the grace is one another. If you've enjoyed trying Sacred Harp singing, you're invited to continue the experience. If you're in Northwest Arkansas, please join the Sacred Harp singers at their monthly meeting on the fourth Sunday of each month at the Shiloh Museum's General Store from 1.30 to 4 p.m. All singers are welcome, including those without musical experience or religious affiliation. You can find other Sacred Harp singing locations and listen to more Sacred Harp music by visiting the website Fossil Law. You can also hear the Northwest Arkansas Sacred Harp singers by downloading one of the two podcasts on the Shiloh Museum's website. <laughs>